At my house, before we have meals, we say a simple table prayer, and it goes like this. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. It's a simple prayer. It helps remind me and my family that everything we have is a gift from God. But I often skip over the first line and just think about maybe the food and the company as the gifts that I'm receiving and that those are the things being blessed. But the first line says something important too. Come Lord Jesus, be our, do you know this one? Guest. We're actually inviting Jesus to be a guest with us in our meal. And I think most of the time I'm just skipping right over that part. But I wonder how I would treat my family members or friends that are with me if I was remembering that, oh, we've invited Jesus to this party too. Oh, maybe we would even be more hospitable to one another if we thought that Jesus' presence was also with us. But I know that whether I'm thinking about it or not, Jesus is our guest already. And in this Bible passage from the very first book of the Bible, we see God showing up to Abraham as a guest. And he took the form of three visitors. And we don't know if Abraham instantly knew it was the Lord showing up in these three visitors, or if he was just practicing the hospitality of his day. Back in that time, it was very important to show hospitality especially to people who were traveling through in the hottest part of the day. So we don't know if Abraham was going above and beyond or just that's what he did for everyone. But he welcomed these three mysterious visitors. And he said, let me bring you some water. Let me wash your feet. Let me give you some bread. And they said, that sounds wonderful. But he went even above and beyond that. For some reason, he had this impulse to even be more available and serve them and welcome them in a big way. So he ran to the tent and he had his wife make up some special cakes. He ran to the herd and got a calf and had a servant prepare it so that he could bring out a juicy steak to these visitors as well as it said curds and milk and he set it before them so that they could be refreshed. He waited on them and then he was also able to hear a message from them. While they were eating, he asked a question that may have tipped him off that they were more than just regular visitors. They asked a question about his wife, and they knew her name. Where's your wife, Sarah? And he said, well, she's there in the tent. And then one of them said, we're going to come back next year, and when we do, your wife, Sarah, is going to have a baby. Now, I didn't share this part of the story with you, but Sarah overheard that, and she laughed out loud when she heard that she would have a baby because Sarah and Abraham were so old that they had long given up the idea of ever having a baby. And so she laughed, but sure enough, a year later, she did have a baby and they named that baby Isaac and that name Isaac means laughter. This is a beautiful story of hospitality and hospitality is one of the spiritual gifts We're in our gifted series called Tapping Into the Power of God, where we are learning about how to see God's spirit at work in ourselves and in each other. And so this week, we're going to be doing the category called Love Gifts. There's three categories. There's the Love Gifts, the Word Gifts, and the Power Gifts. This week, we're just focusing on the Love Gifts, and hospitality is one of those. And let's look at the list of Love Gifts. These things are so commonplace and so practical that we often overlook overlook them or take them for granted and think, how could these be spiritual gifts? These are just things we should all do. Yes, we should all be able to offer these gifts in some way, but when they're spiritual gifts, when we practice them, we experience a profound sense of joy. And when when we're practicing it and the person on the receiving end experiences God's presence. So I'm going to share what these five gifts look like in action. And I have pictures of scenes from Vacation Bible School um, over the past week, so you can just kind of get a, match a name of the gift with how I saw it practiced this past week. The first gift is hospitality. And that's that gift of making people feel welcomed and cared for, that they belong in a place. 
And every morning of VBS, Pastor Taylor and sometimes his daughter Natalie would be out there in front of the church welcoming people, letting them know, yes, you are welcome here. And he even was taking pictures with kids saying, we are so happy that you are with us. And you might wonder, well, how do I know if hospitality is my spiritual gift? Well, it may be your spiritual gift if you experience profound spiritual joy when you're practicing it and the person on the receiving end of that hospitality would experience God's presence in a powerful way. The next gift is the gift of helps. People who have the spiritual gift of helps are people who are good at working behind the scenes. They know what needs to be done. They see little things that, you know what, I should just step in and do that. And it's things that people don't even notice or realize, but yet if there weren't people with these gifts operating and acting, other things couldn't happen. So with Vacation Bible School, with 250 kids coming into the church, there were so many people there ahead of time setting up crafts and Bible story time and games and snack time and helping manage all these kids and getting them to where they needed to be. All behind the scenes, their gift of helps helped all of these kids experience God's presence because of their care. So if you're wondering, maybe helps is my spiritual gift. Well, if you experience a profound sense of spiritual joy when you're practicing it and people receive it as God's presence, maybe it is. The third gift is the gift of administration. And just saying the word makes me want to fall asleep. But please don't fall asleep. The gift of administration is so important. The gift of administration means that you can see the big picture. You know how to orchestrate things and people, organize them where they need to go, set up processes and structures so that other people feel led and they know how they should be working so that then other people can feel welcomed. I saw Deacon Julie showing this gift all week. This is a picture of her leading um, the kids on the last day of vacation Bible school. And she was somebody who helped know how to plug people in and manage where things should go and how they should flow all week. And she recruited people with those gifts to help her in that. It was a major gift. So again, how would you know that that is your spiritual gift? Well, if you experience profound spiritual joy and if those who receive that gift receive God's presence, then it's a spiritual gift at work. The fourth gift in this category of love gifts is the gift of giving. And I have a picture of Pastor Taylor and I with a pie in our face because the kids at Vacation Bible School gave so much to the playgr playground makeover that we, had, we agreed that we'd get pied in the face if they raised $500 to jumpstart that campaign. And they raised $881. So they were excited about that. But the gift of giving means if you have that gift, it means you're always asking, what more could I do? How could I give financially or materially to help more people experience God's presence? What tools are needed? What would need to be purchased in order to help other people minister to God? Maybe you think about, how do I need to rearrange my life so that I could give more? Or maybe you're finding that yourself that you've always earmarked a certain amount of your giving to give towards something important that helps people know God. If you're thinking of that way, even though we're all called to give, maybe you also have that spiritual gift of giving, where you experience profound spiritual joy at giving, and others who receive that gift experience God's presence. The final gift in this category is the gift of mercy. Mercy is that gift of perceiving when people are hurting or when people have been treated unfairly or unjustly, and when others move away from them, you move toward them. And you want to offer comfort to folks who have been hurt in some way. Maybe it's a spiritual gift if you experience, maybe not profound spiritual joy, but maybe a profound spiritual meaningfulness, or that gift of healing when you draw near to someone and they also would receive it as God's presence. Then it's a spiritual gift at work. I'm gonna quiz you on these gifts. So how do you know that you might have one of these spiritual gifts? 
when you experience profound spiritual joy. Oh, good. And when the person on the receiving end experiences God's presence. Yes. This past weekend, just a week ago, a number of us from Good Shepherd, as well as pastors and members from churches all over northwestern Minnesota, got together for our Synod Assembly. All the ELCA churches are a part of it. And we did all sorts of church business, and some of it was really boring. But we also had some amazing times of worship, and we elected a new bishop for our region. And one of the songs that we sung together last weekend, it just hit me. It just showed a picture of what it looks like when we're all using our spiritual gifts. And this is how the song goes. For young and for old, a place at the table, a voice to be heard, a part in the song, the hands of a child in hands that are wrinkled. For young and for old, the right to belong. And God will delight when we are creators of justice and joy, compassion, and peace. And God will delight when we are creators of justice, justice, and joy. I think we've all been given gifts. In fact, I know we all have been given spiritual gifts. And if some of the gifts I've shared today are yours, when we can understand the gifts we've been given, we can develop them. We can nurture them. We can experience more joy in God's presence. And more and more people can experience God's presence. When we're all operating out of our spiritual giftedness, God delights in that. And we can delight. I'm wondering if you will pray with me the table prayer that I often say. But let's think about it not in terms of food, but in terms of our spiritual gifts. Come, Lord Jesus, be our guest, and let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen.